just got home from the grocery store and in taking a quick glance at that new bakery item that you just purchased, you see all these long chemical sounding names in the ingredient list. And then at first glance, kind of freak you out. Today we'll cover off emulsifiers commonly used in baked goods. I'll try and provide a quick overview of what they are, why they are used, and are they actually something to be concerned about. So let's get going. When it comes to additives classified as emulsifiers, there are many. And most often, they are derived from natural sources. However, equally as often, they require some science-driven modification or specialized refining process to optimize their functionality for particular food applications, such as baking, maybe making ice cream, sauces, etc. So here I've listed a few of the more common emulsifiers used in baking, which we will explore. SSL is a natural food grade emulsifier used in bread, buns and other bakery products as a dough strengthener and a crumb softener. It is derived from the sodium salt of lactic acid and stearic acid and is produced through a food grade chemical reaction. SSL is amazing when added to bread or bun doughs providing better crumb, texture, shelf life as well as added strength and process tolerances and oven spring. SSL can be purchased online, it's re relatively inexpensive and a little bit goes a long way. CSL and SSL generally perform the same function. CSL is derived from calcium salts whereas SSL is derived from sodium salt. SSL has a few minor advantages over CSL as it disperses and hydrates more readily in water, thus it does not require any prehydration. Further, SSL appears to provide a better crumb softening than CSL. One of the main reasons mono and diglycerides are used by bakers is to reduce the rate at which oil and water separate. As we know, if you add oil into water and shake it up, within a very short period of time the oil will separate and begin to accumulate at the top of your jar or glass. Now, emulsifiers significantly reduce the speed at which this process occurs, keeping oil evenly dispersed in the solution or mixture for a much longer period of time. This provides better eating quality for longer periods of time, thus shelf life. Monoglycerides occur both naturally and artificially. Mono and diglycerides of fatty acids are typically based on fats and oils found in nature available in many seed and plant oils such as soybean, grapeseed, canola, sunflower, cottonseed, coconut, palm oil. However, it's also available in some plant pomace such as grape pomace, tomato pomace and others. Further, it's also available in some animal fats. Because the concentrations are so low in the items I just mentioned, they're difficult to isolate. Therefore, they are often scientifically or industrially produced, starting with subjecting triglycerides to a chemical reaction to create diglyceride and monoglycerides. Or, they're manufactured through a chemical reaction of plant or animal fatty acids with glycerol, as this is the case for many of the large food manufacturers. Looking at your conditioner, cake, or bread mix, or just the ingredient declaration on the bakery item you just bought, you may also see variations of mono and diglycerides, such as ethoxylated and distilled. Generally, they all work reasonably similar as emulsifiers in a broad range of food products that they are added to. However, ethoxylated mono and diglycerides also contribute more so to improved bread volume and exceptional aeration in batters than the standard mono and diglycerides. Distilled monoglycerides is simply that, a better, more refined form of monoglyceride for optimizing emulsification. Now, datum can be a confusing one. All the details regarding how it actually works is not completely understood. Nevertheless, this is one of those other emulsifiers that are actually added into bread dough for more than just the emulsification benefits it delivers. In bread baking, datum is added to strengthen the gluten network for not only improved loaf volume, but also added to impart a more chewy texture deemed desirable in many of the artisan and crusty style breads. Datum is a complex emulsifier commercially produced from mono and diglycerides and therefore derived from the same animal, plant and seed sources. 
Although the name is long and scary sounding, datum remains a common additive in bakery products. Now, when it comes to natural emulsifiers, there's literally loads of them, but we're going to try to pick a few of the most common ones that are used in baking. So let's start with lecithin. In cakes, biscuits, cookies, lecithin can reduce the use of eggs and fat and produce better mixing action and machinability. It protects against oxidation. And in puff pastry and Danish, it upgrades the flakiness of the dough. In bread and roll production, lecithin adds in greater loaf volume, increases shelf life. However, most bread bakers would agree that it is most effective when used in conjunction with one or more of the other emulsifiers we talked about earlier. Now, egg yolks, soy lecithin, pea, chickpea, lentil bean, and many other simple plant, seed, or animal-derived ingredients have emulsifying properties for use in baking. The biggest factor is how well they perform. Most bakers will agree that emulsification expectations are further down the scale on most of these as compared to the nutritional and flavor complement they may offer. When it comes to emulsifiers, I tried to pick the most common additives used in baking. There are many more with equally scary sounding and hard to pronounce names in almost every prepackaged food, mix, sauce, etc. you buy at your local grocer. If you're curious about what the stuff is, is, Google it. However, there's no guarantee that you may not just be overwhelmed with the technical definitions of, of this stuff. Now keep in mind, although you may find some articles or research that is contrary, as far as I can see, most emulsifiers remain a product derived from completely natural sources that is accepted by bakers, bakeries, and food regulators around the world. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out as I'm getting this channel going here. And be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have sitting right over here. Uh, we'll see you next time. No BS breaking.